They didn't need no education. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Hollywood directors that never went to film school. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at film directors who worked primarily in Hollywood after the 1960s boom that saw film schools cropping up everywhere. That means you won't be hearing names like Hitchcock or Kubrick, since they came up before film schools became more commonplace. <laughs> We're also excluding film school dropouts like Paul Thomas Anderson. Number 10, Guy Ritchie. Fight for it. You and me. Sometimes it helps to know the right people. This English director started his career after leaving high school with bottom rung jobs in the film industry, eventually working his way up to directing TV commercials. In 1995, he directed a 20 minute short film that he later used to entice investors for what he hoped would be his first feature length picture. Lock stock and two smoking barrels. When you dance with the devil, you wait for the salt to stop. By 1998, Richie had the kind of luck any young artist could only dream of. Long story short, a family friend called his nephew, new producer slash director Matthew Vaughn, who not only agreed to produce, but also lined up investors. And bam! Lock stock and one smoking career. It's a matter of professional integrity. Number nine, Wes Craven. Please, God. This. God. Considering he was forbidden from watching most films growing up, he's sure left a mark on cinema. This grandfather of the modern slasher fix started off in academia, studying English and psychology, and later mastering in philosophy and writing. It wasn't until he snuck out of graduate school for a day to see To Kill a Mockingbird that he was hooked. Not because I'm not going back to school anymore. After a brief teaching stint, Craven entered the film industry first as a sound editor, then a film editor, and later writing for adult films. Finally, in 1972, in collaboration with his friend Sean S. Cunningham, Craven made it to the director's chair with his shocking debut, The Last House on the Left. <laughs> oh, Christ. Number 8, Nora Ephron. You gotta learn to laugh. This is the way to true love. She was a blogger, producer, writer, and journalist, but it's her work as a director that lands her here. Born to playwrights and screenwriters, the New York City-born Nora Ephron went on to be nominated for an Oscar three times in her career. Now known for her romantic comedies, she graduated from Wellesley College in the early 60s and initially made a name for herself as an essayist and journalist, until she tried her hand at screenwriting. She finally gave directing a try after several decades as a screenwriter. Don't I ever get a turn? Isn't it ever okay for me to have a life? Though 1992's This Is My Life didn't exactly make waves, Audiences would soon warm up to Efron thanks to the classic rom-com Sleepless in Seattle the next year. I left her by the telescopes. Number 7, Terry Gilliam. Camelot. It's only a model. Shh. This American-born British actor, director, and animator has quite a repertoire, from artistry to acting to writing to producing, and of course, directing. One of the founding members of the hugely successful and influential Monty Python comedy troupe his off-kilter style and wit shine through in his own films. Starting off as a strip animator, Gilliam has always had a vision that's all his own, and the sort of imagination that certainly could never be taught in any school, including his preference for extremely wide-angle lenses. His visual aesthetic and comedic timing are perhaps all the more surprising when you realize that Gilliam grew up without a TV and little access to film. My whole visual sense came from having to invent the faces, the costumes, the locations, the sets. Number six, Spike Jones. What is it about people that you like? Because some people don't like people. Um, I don't, I guess I'm just curious. This versatile director really likes to get into his audiences and sometimes his subjects, heads. Rather than hit the books, Jones learned his way around a camera by getting behind the lens as a photographer, working for Freestyle and Magazine in the 1980s. When several bands noticed his photos, he was prompted to start directing music videos. You can blow with this. In 1999, he made his major motion picture debut with the surreal comedy, Being John Malkovich. Can I be anybody that I want to be? Well, you... Actually... You can be John Malkovich. Jones has cited an interest in people and personal stories as the drive that allows him to so seamlessly move from one project to the next. With multiple Oscar nods, it's clear he's got a good head for his business. The past is just a story we tell ourselves. Number five, Ridley Scott. Hmm. 
Most famous for his striking visuals and larger-than-life characters, this hard-working English director started life in a small UK town. While studying photography and graphic design at the Royal College of Art in London, Scott made his first short film that helped the RCA develop its own film department. After graduation, he landed himself a job at the BBC as a trainee set designer. Gradually working his way up, he began directing for TV in 1965. While his feature debut was the 1997 historical drama, The Duelist, it was his terrifying and groundbreaking sci-fi horror flick, Alien, that rocketed him into international fame. He has earned three director Oscar nominations since, and several for Best Picture. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? Number four, Quentin Tarantino. There's nothing that you're gonna say that's gonna make me forget that I love my wife, is there? It makes sense that his stories are often categorized by their non-linear plots, because his lead up to success was certainly atypical. After dropping out of high school at 15 years old, he lied about his age and started working at a porno theater, later enrolling in acting classes. Tarantino slowly but surely climbed in the industry, even appearing as an Elvis impersonator on an episode of The Golden Girls. But he was seeking to make a name for himself as a screenwriter, a goal he eventually realized with films like Reservoir Dogs. Joe, if you kill that man, you die next. Since sitting in the director's chair, he's earned several Oscar nods for directing and screenwriting while building a reputation as the mastermind behind some of Hollywood's most gloriously brutal and violent films. I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. Number three, Christopher Nolan. I'm a self-taught filmmaker. I never went to film school. I never studied filmmaking in any way. From a very early age, Christopher Nolan knew he wanted to be a filmmaker. Using his father's Super 8 camera, he would film dramas with his action figures. At university, he chose to study English literature rather than film, but he did select his college based on the campus's superior filmmaking equipment and facilities. There, he taught himself to make short films. In 1998, he debuted his first feature, Following, shot over the course of a year and paid for out of pocket. Since then, with hits like The Prestige, Inception, Interstellar, and The Dark Knight trilogy, Nolan has become one of the most successful directors of the new millennium and highest grossing directors of all time. You wanna know how I got these scars? Number two, David Fincher. I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Making films with an eight millimeter camera at the age of eight, David Fincher directed plays at high school and worked at a movie theater in his youth. In his 20s, he was a production assistant at Cordy Films and then worked different jobs, even serving as an assistant camera operator at Industrial Light and Magic. Around the same time, he founded Propaganda Films, a video and commercial company that gave many directors, including Spike Jones, a start. Fincher's film debut saw him helm the sequel to a franchise kicked off by Ridley Scott and James Cameron, Aliens 3. He's since become known for his extreme close-ups and tense psychological thrillers, but it's his work in drama that's earned him two Oscar nods for Best Director. <laughs> you bitch. Before we lift the curtain on our top choice, here are a few honorable mentions. Excuse me, where's everybody going? To Gobbler's Knob. It's Groundhog Day. But for me, what was really uh, uh, engrossing in television were the movies that were recycled on TV. Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain, but you feel it. In general, we're children of the 20th century, and that means that we're drawn to originality. Leon, I think I'm kind of falling in love with you. It's the first time for me, you know? I was so touched by it. I, I cried a few times during the, the reading of the script. Number one, James Cameron. Get away from her, you bitch! In college, this Canadian director studied physics, switched to English, then dropped out. He then began driving a truck and teaching himself about special effects and projection with books from his local library. After seeing the original Star Wars, however, Cameron quit gear jamming and got into showbiz. The future Titanic director wore many hats in his early days, including production designer, model maker, writer, and eventually special effects director. But Cameron's big break came as the result of food poisoning during the making of Piranha 2. He had a fever dream about a robot assassin from the future, a premise that would become the plot of his first film, The Terminator. I'll be back 
and since then, he's directed some of the most beloved, blockbusting, epic, and highest grossing films in recent history. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.